This is the Missing Persons Reports, brought to you by Jamaica Chronicles. The St. Andrews Central Police are seeking the public's assistance to reunite this boy with his family, who was found wandering on Montrose Road, Kingston 6, on Friday, December 15. He was found wandering in the area. Approximately 7 p.m., he gave his name as Shenardo Thompson, who is nine years old. However, he is unable to say where he lives. Anyone with information that can assist the police in reuniting Shenardo Thompson with his family is being asked to contact the Matilda's Corner Police at 876-978-6003, the 119 police emergency number or the nearest police station. The woman who died from injuries received in a three-way motor vehicle crash at a section of Mandela Highway in St. Andrew on Saturday has been identified. She is 23-year-old Shadidra Williams of Four Paths in Clarendon. Reports are that the young woman was the passenger in an SUV that slammed into a truck that was parked on the side of the road. The impact of the collision resulted in the vehicle in which Williams was traveling, swerving, and hitting another vehicle. The 23-year-old was taken to hospital where she later succumbed to her injuries. The occupants of the other vehicle did not receive any life-threatening injuries. Reports are that Williams was visiting the island on holiday. Are about 5.45 this morning, the police gathered that a SUV Benz motor car was traveling along the Nelson Mandela Highway headed in a westerly direction towards Spanish Town. When on reaching the vicinity, just past the overhead bridge, uh, what happened, appeared to happen, is that a truck was parked on the left side of the road, on the hard shoulder, and the vehicle, that is the said SUV, Benz motor car, collided with the right rear section of it. As a result of that, the vehicle spun and overturned and made connection with another motor car that was traveling in the same direction. Unfortunately, a lady that was traveling in the Benz motor car uh, suffered serious injury, injury and died as a result of the crash. There were no other serious injuries. We gather that the vehicles had just passed a speed check point at six miles. Um, investigation is, is being carried out to ascertain properly whether or not there was a manner of driving that amounts to driving and causing death by dangerous driving or manslaughter. The police have confirmed that a murder investigation into the death of Melissa Silvera, the wife of former PNP Member of Parliament, Jolian Silvera has been launched. It was previously reported that Silvera died in her sleep on November 10. While speaking with the local media, Deputy Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crime and Security, Fitz Bailey confirmed that a murder investigation is ongoing. According to Nationwide News, the police upgraded their probe after Silvera's post-mortem examination revealed she was shot at least three times. It was also reported that Silvera's husband has retained the services of a King's Council and he was interviewed by scene of crime investigators. The Silveras tied the knot in December 2015. Tragically, in 2017, the Silveras experienced another heartbreaking loss when their two-year-old son, Justin, drowned in a pool at their Stony Hill St. Andrew home. Police are reporting that one of two men killed in a gun attack in Cambridge District, near Brompton, on Friday night, was an alleged member of the St. Elizabeth-based speculation gang. He is Donovan Bailey, 50, otherwise called Don. Police named the second victim as Elvin McIntosh, an associate of Bailey. Police sources said Bailey was well known to investigators as they alleged that he was involved in various criminal activities, including murders, shooting, and pradial larceny. A police report said shortly after 8 p.m., the men were in a yard when a gunman entered and opened fire hitting them. 
Further reports are that the men were pumping air into a tire on a Mark X motor car when the gun attack happened. They were both pronounced dead at a nearby medical facility. The Spanish town police on Friday arrested a 17-year-old boy following the seizure of a firearm during a fete at a high school in St. Catherine. He is being held on possession of a prohibited weapon and is likely to be charged. The police report that about 8 p.m., a team was on duty at the school where an event was in session. On the approach of the lawmen, the boy was observed acting in a manner that aroused their suspicion, according to the police. He was accosted and searched, and a Beretta 9mm pistol was seen in a bag he had in his possession, and he was subsequently arrested. <laughs> Renato Adams, commonly known as Adams, is a retired senior superintendent of police and was head of the now defunct Crime Management Unit. Born in 1950, Renato grew up in a family home with his mother, father, sister, and four brothers in rural St. Elizabeth in Jamaica. From the outset, he distinguished himself among his peers in child games, academics, family leadership, and sports. He was well-loved by his teachers and would be always willing to help when they had to leave class for meetings. They always leave him in charge, said the mother of the boy, who grew up to become Jamaica's most popular crime fighter. Like many Jamaican children, Renato was raised by his mother. His father, Merton Adams, traveled frequently, participating in farm work programs in the United States. His dad was the breadwinner of the family and would make sure they were well taken care of, but then emigrated to England and did not return. He subsequently tried to foil for his wife, but because she was born in Panama and did not possess a Jamaican birth certificate, the foiling process was hampered, and she did not get the chance to immigrate and join him in England. After a while, they lost contact with each other. It wasn't until his death from cancer in 1981 that the family got word of him again. He had asked to be buried in Jamaica, a desire to be close to his family, who did not know him well. Renato and his siblings were not affected by their father's absence. Instead of breaking him, his father's absence, death, and the demise of the eldest son pushed young Renato to the head of the family, another role which his mother said he handled well. Based on the stories told by his mother, it seems as if senior superintendent Renato Adams was born to lead and trained to serve. He would help his mom to care for the younger ones and was always loving and kind to the rest of the children. He was a dutiful child and would help around the house and on the farm. One of Adam's favorite childhood games was a game called Police and Thief, in which the kids would cut out guns from cardboard boxes and would play cops hunting bad guys. But Adams would not participate in the game if he was not playing the role of the police. A devout member of the Pentecostal Church, his mother, Mrs. Mabel Adams, disclosed that Renato would attend church with her on a regular basis and at one point even got baptized. But the controversial, tough-talking, fearsome, and fearless crime fighter who was the leader of the CMU is not known in the media or in the streets of Jamaica as a man of the church, but as a no-nonsense law enforcer whose image, name, and reputation would serve as a menacing deterrent to criminals so much so that they would run like a fugitive and in some cases even migrating from Jamaica in a bid to avoid confrontation with the senior superintendent. In the early 2000s, Adams and the CMU embarked on a national anti-crime intelligence-driven initiative that would lead them to go after thugs and gangsters in inner city and also deep rural crime hotspots. It is said that the CMU boss would seize the cell phones of the cops before the raids and also would keep the locations of the operations secret to stop corrupt officers from tipping off their criminal friends. In one such operation, that took place in the volatile community of Anato Bay in St. Mary, Adam's suspicions came to reality 
when upon entering the narrow lanes of the densely populated seaside town, numerous houses were abandoned because the occupants who Adam suspected to be criminals were tipped off by someone in the police hierarchy. The CMU was created in 2000 to tackle spiraling rates of crime in Jamaica, which was at the time one of the most violent countries in the world. Adams, who was in charge of the unit, decided that brutal murders required a brutal response. One of the most publicized operations involving Adams and his team is known as the Brayton 7 shooting, which took place on March 14, 2001. Senior Superintendent Renato Adams had tried his own cure for Jamaica's crime epidemic when a group of youths suspected of killing a police officer were tracked to a small house in Brayton, just outside Kingston. He and his men went in through the front door. A few minutes later, all the suspects in the house were dead, as well as a friend of the suspects used by the police as a decoy, a passerby, and a neighbor who had come to see what was going on, seven young men in all, most of them teenagers. Six of the seven had shot wounds in the head, four from behind. Before they were killed, a journalist living nearby said he heard the boys pleading for mercy. According to Adam's account of the Brayton Raid, members of the CMU came under fire as they approached a small concrete house. They returned fire from outside, and by the time they gained control of the house, all seven suspects were laying down dead. It was Superintendent Adams again, who led the CMU into West Kingston before dawn on Saturday, July 7, 2001, on the weapons search that started the Hollywood-style shootout. He said he came under fire from local gangs and his men were forced to shoot back. Witnesses agree that shots were fired from the alleys in Tivoli Gardens, a slum loyal to the Jamaica Labor Party, but they said the CMU response was to open fire indiscriminately. The squad commandeered a disused building in Coronation Market from where they poured fire into the streets. The CMU was under sustained heavy gunfire for hours from gunmen from Tivoli Gardens pinning down the cops inside a high-rise building. The gunfire ceased for a short moment when former Prime Minister Edward Siaga showed up to offer the officers safe passage out. Adams turned the offer down, and when Siaga left, the gunfire resumed. When the standoff ended and the smoke cleared, 27 citizens lay dead. Come defend the peace. Come make we defend the peace. No more war. No more war. Come make we defend the peace. Make we stop the fly like a beast. No more war.